Welcome everybody. This is John Burra from MammothInteractive.com. I'm a game, web, and app developer. And MammothInteractive.com is a site that produces a ton of content, whether it's games or apps, and that's apps for the App Store or just web apps, and also training content like the content you're about to see here. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get started with Sprite Kit. So as you can see, I'm in Xcode here. And when you start a new project, and you can just go File, New, Project to get this window here, you have all of these different kinds of applications. We just want an iOS application. And what iOS is, is using specifically the iPhone and the iPad. and what we want to do is we'll make an iPhone app here and we'll call this getting started with Sprite Kit. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and push next here. Okay. You want to go ahead and push create. And now we have our iPhone game set up here. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to run it because you always want to make sure that you run everything when you start it up. The reason is, is that sometimes very rarely, but sometimes it might not load correctly, in which case you have to start a new project here. And as you can see, our standard project is working, and that's all good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my gamescene.swift, and I'm just going to show you how to add in a sprite. It's going to be very simple here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything because we're going to um, we're just going to do everything from scratch here, and we're going to add in our function here. So just type in function. And I like to think of this as an area where I can put my code. And we'll call this spawn sprite. We'll call it spawn sprite here. Okay. And within our override function view did load, this is where you put code that starts when the game starts. So for example, if you type in spawn sprite within here, this calls this function, which will then spawn a sprite. In order to spawn a sprite, we need to add in a variable. We'll just call this um, my sprite. And we'll make it equal to sk sprite kit node. And you need to add in a question mark and two brackets there. Okay, And this is going to be what our sprite is for now. All right, in spawn sprite, let's go to my sprite. And you can see it's of type sk sprite kit node. Right, these are the nodes and the sprites that we're going to be working with. Is equal to SK sprite kit node. And I'm going to type in a bracket here, and you can add in all of these different items here. So if you want to add in a sprite with an image in it, uh, you can go ahead and add in this image name with two quotes. And for example, you can add in spaceship like this. Okay. Now remember that spaceship that we saw a couple. Uh, minutes ago, that is what the name of that is. And you can find that and you can find all of your images in this assets.x cassettes. You can see that there's a nice looking spaceship right there. It looks pretty, pretty good. But we're not going to be interested in that right now. You can add in your own images just by dragging and dropping to that x cassettes folder. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at this color slash CG size. Whenever you see anything like what you see here in Xcode, it generally means that it's looking for data of that type. So in this case, it's looking for UI color, which means user interface color. Okay, And I'm just going to do dot orange color because it's actually one of my favorites. And size here, if we type in CG size like this, and we can add in a width and a height. Now we'll make sure that it's, well, let's make it 40 by, and I'm just pushing tab, by the way, 40, 40. Now you think we might be finished here, but we're not. We need a sprite, which we have a color, and we have a dimension of it. Let's go to my sprite dot position, okay? And you can see that, by the way, I said dot position is a CG point. So I'm going to type in CG point, and we're going to, uh, put this right in the middle. Now there's a fun little tip to put it in the middle here, and I'm going to call the CG Rect Get Mid X. CG Rectangle Get Mid X. X is across the screen, and I'm going to go to self.frame. And that's going to put it right in the middle. Likewise, if you go to CG Rect Get Mid 
y and go to self.frame, it will put it in in the middle. So x is across, y is up and down. If you add in both of these two items here, what will happen is that it will put this sprite in the middle here. Now you think it might be finished here. However, we need to go self.addChild and we're going to type in my sprite. Now, this is essentially how you spawn something. I recommend putting it in a function. I recommend giving it a height and a color. And if you do use an image, by the way, for example, if you wanted to use the spaceship, you can go always go to my sprite dot size and you can e make it equal to a CG size here and you can make it to whatever you want. So it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Let's change the background color because it's fun. Let's go to self dot background color is equal to UI color and let's give it an off black color. So I'm going to go to this RGB uh, red, green, blue alpha, which means red, the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue that you're going to have in your color. Now this is a value between 0 and 1, and so I'll put 0.2, because this gives it a nice black color. And the alpha is the transparency, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it as 1. Now let's go ahead and let's run this here, and what will happen is you'll see here uh, first of all, it says that there's a warning here. It's just because you've never used it here. You, for this example, we're not using this override function. But and anyway, you see that we have a nice orange uh, dot in there. We can change this to whatever we want here. We can make the width larger. So for, for example, we can make it 80 by 80. And instead of orange color, we can make it dot yellow color. Okay, Just like that here. And if we go ahead and run it again... Let's go ahead and let's take a look at that. You'll see that you've added in a sprite, and you can do all these really cool things with sprites. Now, the color scheme was not chosen by accident. This is a very basic color scheme, but it's really effective. You have dark background and a lighter foreground. Generally, these two should contrast. Not always, but generally these two things should contrast. You can see that the yellow kind of pops out, and that's because it's light against dark. That may sound simple, and you may have already known that, but it's actually something that you always have to think about. Colors are extremely important in games, all right? So that concludes the tutorial. You can go to mammothinteractive.com. You can see you can get some free uh, courses there. You can also subscribe for $29 a month where you get hundreds of courses and you also can find out the links to all of our Udemy courses uh, down in the links below. If you purchase a Udemy course and you complete one, you are eligible for the Mammoth Scholarship. We award one student who completes a course every month $500. That's 500 US dollars for just completing a course. The links are there below. They are on discounted price. Go to mammothinteractive.com, subscribe to this channel, like us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.